Today and I can do that because I'm sick of standing around, we're going to be making a shop stool. Now our shop stool is going to be made out of oak, which is a hardwood, and all of my oak came from the big box store. The top of the stool, where you're going to be sitting, is made out of inch thick oak that's sold as five quarter oak. Uh, the legs are going to be made out of two by two oak, which means they're an inch and a half by an inch and a half square. The stool is going to be made up mostly of mortise and tenon joints. Now mortise and tenon joints, that, that phrase can sound a little bit scary, but it's really not. Um, we're going to be using our router, a simple jig, and our table saw to make all of our mortises and tenons. It's super simple, so stay tuned. So because the material for our seat only came in three and a half inch wide pieces, we need to glue up three of them to make a nice solid deep seat. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our clamps. But before we get too far, I'm also going to put down a little sheet of wax paper. Now normally, I wouldn't worry too much about getting glue on my bench top, but this bench isn't even a season old yet, so I want to keep it a little bit clean. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a basically a dry fit. So I'm going to put my material in here. Now it came from the home center all S4S, which means they should be pretty much square and good to go. Um, but I want to do this first without glue, just to make sure. Do a quick clamp up here. Now I just roughly cut my material to length here and we'll cut it to final dimension on the table saw after the glue has cured. Doing that. I'd say that looks pretty good. I'm ready to throw on some glue. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsor Tightbond for supporting I Can Do That. Uh, we use Tightbond in the shop all the time. For this glue up we're using Tightbond 2 which uh, tacks up and sets up a little bit faster than uh, the normal type on that we usually use because we're under a deadline here. So, just start gluing up. So as I'm tightening these clamps, I'm just making sure that the boards are staying nice and square. You can see I've got a probably a little bit more squeeze out than I'd like here. Um, but squeeze out is good. We can always clean that up later and it means we are getting a nice strong glue joint. And one more clamp over the top. It's always good to clamp from both sides of your piece. It helps it from bowing. So we'll let this cure up and move on to making our legs. So now it's on to the fun part. Making our mortises and our mortising jig. Now all of our mortises are going to be 90 degree square holes in our legs. To make those mortises, we're going to be using our router with a mortising bit. I have a half inch mortising bit in my router because our holes are an inch by inch square. So I'll be doing two passes in each mortise. The first thing you need to do is measure the offset from the edge of your bit over to the edge of your router base. Thankfully, my base has a couple of center lines running through it. So, we'll go in here and measure to the edge of our router bit. That looks like it's two and three sixteenths. So remember that number, two and three sixteenths. Now, we know the edge wall of our mortise is going to be a quarter inch. So, two and three sixteenths Minus a quarter inch is an inch and 15 sixteenths. So uh, when we get over to our mortising jig, we know we want our fence to be an inch and 15 sixteenths away from the edge of our workpiece. Because when we go in here to cut our mortise, we'll have the offset of the base to the edge of the router bit, and that will be two and three sixteenths. So now that we know uh, the offset of our base, we can attach our fence to our router jig. Now the base of the jig is an inch and a half thick. That's a nominal thickness for most two by material. You're gonna wanna verify just in case you're using something from your scrap bin. Um, but this we know is an inch and a half thick, which means when we use our two by two material, it's perfectly flush on the top. So now we wanna measure an inch and 15 sixteenths and we'll use the edge of our jig and just give ourselves a couple of reference marks here. We're going to want to line up our fence here. 
I'm just gonna verify in the middle there too that then works. To attach our fence, I'm going to drill a couple of countersinks in our fence here and then use some screws. Just going to verify our depth there. So now I just need to drive in a couple of screws. So next we're going to lay out our mortises. Now the first thing I did with my stock is I cut each leg to roughly 30 inches in length. I also want to make sure that I've got nice square edges on the bottoms of the legs. That looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. Great. And so now that I know I have good edges on the bottoms of my legs, I'm just going to mark them with a B here. Okay, so now we want to measure for our mortises. Now we're going to have mortises at 10 inches and 20 inches, and our mortises are an inch square. So I'm going to do a mark at 10 inches and a mark at 11 inches, and then I'll go up here and do one at 20 inches and 21 inches. Come back and square up those lines. So you can see I've only marked the front and back of each of these mortises. That's because we know our offset on the router jig is exactly quarter of an inch, so we don't need to mark those walls. <clears throat> now using this as a bit of a story stick, I'm going to transfer the measurements to my other legs here. Maybe I'll just go one at a time. Now one thing to keep in mind while you're making your mortises are how good your legs look. This is going to be a shop stool, so the legs are really only going to look as good as the person sitting on it. Um, but you know your mortises are going to be an inside face, so uh, you should probably put them on the least good looking face. Now the first thing we want to do when we're making our mortises with a plunge router is determine how deep we want the plunge to go. So our tenons are going to be three quarters of an inch long, so our mortises should be at least three quarters of an inch deep. So I'm going to set my square to three quarters of an inch and throw a mark on my piece. And I'm just going to darken that up a little bit because it's hard to see through all these rays here. Then we're going to bring our piece over to our jig and just use the nice surface of our jig to set our depth. So we'll plunge down to the three quarter inch depth. Now I'm just gonna flip this over here just to verify that we're at three quarters of an inch deep. Looks good. So I've got a variable speed router here that goes from 10,000 RPMs to 23,000 RPMs. And uh, because we have a good size bit in here, I'm going to slow it way, way down, just at about 10,000 RPMs. So before I actually do this, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. So we've got our layout lines on our mortise. So I'm going to set up and do a series of plunges to get right to the edges of our mortise here. And just be very careful that I don't go too far. Once I've done all these plunges, I'll clean up a little bit flip my piece around and plunge on the other side.
So now that we have most of the waste hogged out with our plunge router, we're just gonna do a little bit of light chisel work. I'm just gonna hold this down with my hold fast and grab my chisel. Now this is also a great time to thank our sponsor Woodcraft where we got this set of Wood River bevel edge socket chisels. But it's not just tools, you can also get your finishing supplies, your glue, and also routers and, and router bits. Thanks Woodcraft. So with the chisel, I'm just going to work on squaring up the, this uh, rounded plunge here. So we're just going to nibble away a little bit at the front and back and then come back and work on squaring up the corners. That's pretty square. Now you can see I overshot the end of the mortise a little bit with the router bit, but thankfully we've got a quarter inch offset all the way around so that'll be covered up too. Now we just gotta cut a million more of these and then it's on to tenons. So the legs are splayed out at five degrees. Uh, so I've gone ahead and set my bevel to five degrees and I'm going to mark the bottom and top of each leg. Now if you remember from laying out our mortises earlier, we referenced from the bottom of each leg. So as long as we have each leg cut to the same length and we keep our bottoms in the right spot, everything should turn out just fine, I hope. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the bevel on the bottom of the leg. You also wanna make sure that your bevels are going in the correct direction. So you want your mortises on the inside of the leg. We'll come back up to the top here. Yep, still the right direction and mark our other bevel. And then we'll head over to the table saw to cut those. So now that I have my bevels laid out on my first leg here, I can cut them off at the table saw. Now I know these are a five degree bevel, so I've set my miter gauge to 85 degrees, which is five degrees off of 90. Then it's just simply a matter of lining up your cut, making it, flipping your leg around, make your second cut, and then you've got your leg trimmed to final size and we'll use that one to lay out the rest of the legs so they're all exactly the same size. And I wanna make sure that the off cut is to the right of the blade and I'm on the right side of the pencil line here. And it's okay to sneak up on it too if you need to, but I'm feeling pretty confident here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the cut. So we'll use this leg to lay out the rest of them and then we can make our final mortises. So now that we have the legs trimmed to final size, we can lay out our last mortises. Now there's going to be a mortise in each top of the leg uh, and they're going to be opposing so they're mirror images of each other. Now that we have this bevel at the top too, it makes laying out the mortises a little bit trickier as well. Um, th these are going to be straight mortises. So you can see here as the piece goes into the top, it goes down and locks in. So I'm going to use the piece and uh, my square to mark some reference lines on the top that I can carry over to the face. It's easier to do that with it set up in the vise, so I'll go ahead and do that. So I need to lay out the mortise and I'm going to be marking on the top then transferring those lines over. So I know I wanna come in a quarter inch from each edge here um, but because this is angled, I can only come in from the acute side. Come in. That's a quarter, and then I want to come in an inch and a quarter as well. The other side of the mortise here. Then 
I can bring those layout lines all the way to the front. My square here, it's a little tricky to see, but just got to go slow. So then I can carry these lines over to the top. And then finally, I know I need to come down a quarter of an inch and an inch and a quarter to lay out the rest of the mortise. is so we'll need to lay out the rest of our mortises we'll have two like this and two that are mirror images of it and then we can cut those so now that we have our final mortises laid out at the top of our legs it's time to cut them now this is probably the trickiest jig setup in this entire project um, so I just want to walk you through it so our mortises are one inch square just like all the rest of the mortises but because of the angle here the mortise wall gets a little bit thin over here so we want to make sure we don't overcut there, so just go slowly, nibble away. Now we'll bring the piece over to our jig and we're going to actually use the top of the leg as the reference on the jig. So I'm gonna clamp that in place and then we can make one pass with the router against the fence, then I milled up a spacer to use to get the second half of the mortise because we can't actually flip it around and mill the whole thing. I've got my half inch wide spacer that I'll clamp to the jig and that'll push the router bit over a half an inch to do the other part of the mortise. So this is the last mortise. You can see that I've left the corner of the mortise that I was concerned about a little bit thicker and we'll just end up trimming the tenon to fit there so we have a little bit more wall. So after all of our mortises have been cut, almost a million of them, it's time to cut the tenons on the stretchers and we can start putting the stool together. So let's head over to the table saw. So the first step to cutting our stretchers is to cut them to length. Now we have three different size stretchers in our cutting list, you'll want to reference that and look it over before you start doing this. But the process is pretty simple. We have our miter gauge set to five degrees. We'll cut off an end to start, then we can flip it over, measure our length, and cut the stretcher to final length. So I'll go ahead and do that. So now that we have our stretcher cut to length, it's time to cut the tenons. So our table saw setup uh, is a little bit different. We've removed the blade guard and we've set the blade height to a quarter of an inch. We're going to use the blade to nibble away around the tenon. So we've got a one inch square tenon. We'll also use the fence of the table saw and I'm going to set that to just a hair shy of three quarters of an inch away from the left edge of the blade. Now with that set up in place, I'll make a pass with our piece right against the fence, and then I'll move it out and nibble away at it 
over the blade a few times and that'll cut the entire wall of the tenon. Then I'll flip the piece over, do the same thing. Now I've got my miter gauge set to five degrees right of 90 this way. And then for the second setup, I'll rotate it five degrees left of 90 to cut the other tenons. So now we need to rotate the miter gauge five degrees left of 90, and we can actually use our workpiece to help us set that. Holding it up against the fence here, we'll zero it in, double check that it's five left of 90, and then we'll repeat the same process. So you can see after I've cut the tenon that I actually come back and pop the tenon over the blade a few times and that'll just help to knock down any remaining material there in case you missed it. Um, I often do. So next we're going to set up to cut the other two shoulders of the tenon. So next we're going to change our miter gauge to 90 degrees. And then we still have the fence in the same spot and we're going to cut the um, bottoms of the tenons. Uh, just at 90 degrees, nibble over as we have before. First, I'm just going to verify that that will be okay, and it should be. And we'll nibble these tendons. So now if we just do the same thing on the other sides of the tenons, um, we're going to be leaving a pretty significant chunk of wood on there. And that's because of the angle, our five degree angle of our stool and our tenons and our splay. So I'm just going to cheat the fence over a hair and verify here. Um, we will be leaving a little bit of wood left on the tenon that we'll need to clean up with a chisel, but that's the fun part about fitting all these tenons. So there you go, we've cut out uh, the tenons on one of our stretchers. We'll go and repeat the same process for all of them. It's always good to batch parts out when you can. Then we'll head to the bench for a little bit of handwork with a saw and a chisel. So now that we have our tenons roughed out, this is where the real fun happens. You can see here we left a little bit of extra material at the uh, top of each tenon on both sides. So we're going to take a chisel and clean that out. And so I'm just going to be using the wall of the tenon on each side to guide my chisel. And it's just a little, you know, slow, steady handwork. The real fun stuff. You want to try to make that tenon wall as straight as you can. I'd say that looks pretty good. Flip it around, do it on the other side. So the last piece of handwork we need to do on our tenons is cut off the angle. Now on our angled stretchers, if we tried to put the tenon into our mortises as is, they would bottom out and you'd have a big gap because the mortises in the legs are at 90 degrees. So the easy fix is just to modify our tenon a little bit. So I'm going to mark off a bit of an angle on the bottom edge of the tenon. 
I'm just using a ruler with a square edge to mark that. Then I'll transfer that line to the top and saw it off in the vise. Love that quick release. All right. So I'm just gonna transfer the line to the top of the tenon so I can see it better with my saw. And then I'm just gonna saw straight down on the tenon. Now I am using a, a premium saw, but you can use any hand saw you have. I just happen to be very lucky. Start my cut there. and give it a quick cut. There you go. So we've got our tenon ready. We'll need to do that to all of the angled tenons. And then we're almost ready to assemble our stool. So once we have all of our angled stretchers and tenons cut, we also need to cut some square ones. That's the easy part. We keep our blade height still at a quarter of an inch and our fence just shy of three quarters of an inch away. And we'll cut all of our tenons and no cleanup required this time. You can see I got a little bit sloppy, so I'm gonna go back and clean those up on the table saw. So this is where the fun part really starts. We get to make sure all of our tenons fit in the appropriate spots in all of our mortises. It should be pretty straightforward. You're gonna to need to hand tune a little bit with your chisel, maybe your hand saw, maybe your block plane, but it's all part of the fun. The most important thing I wanna point out here is um, you remember that we left uh, the mortises at the top of the legs a little bit out of square. We've got the rounded corner here from the router bit and that's so we've got enough edge wall to have a nice strong mortise. In order to make our tenon fit, the simplest thing to do is just to pair the corner of the square tenon. So we're gonna do that now in the vise. Now pairing with a chisel is pretty straightforward. You don't wanna use a mallet or a hammer or anything. It's really just arm pressure towards the corner here. So go ahead and start. And you can see that already the, the grain wants to separate there. So we'll give it another little shave there. And we'll try it in our mortise. It looks like our tenon's a little bit thick. So I'll trim that up and keep working on fitting these. Now comes the point everybody's been waiting for. We're finally going to start gluing together our stool. I'm gonna to glue together each side, the two splayed sides, and then finally clamp it all together after those two sides have dried. So gluing up your mortises and tenons um, is pretty straightforward. We're just going to take some glue. We're going to paint the insides of the mortises and the outsides of the tenons, put it all together and clamp it. Now, because we have this five degree angle going on, um, I went ahead and made some clamping blocks. And these are actually just off cuts from when I cut my legs and stretchers. They've got a five degree bevel on them. So when we put them on, we'll be able to clamp straight across and get plenty of pressure on our stretchers there. So I'm gonna start gluing up. So 
So we'll glue up the other set of legs, let those cure, then glue the whole bench together and work on the seat. So we've taken our seat top out of the clamps and cleaned up the glue, sanded it a little bit, and now it's time to cut it to length. We'll be using our table saw crosscut sled that we built in a previous video, link down below. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just use the saw blade to get a nice square edge on one end, then I'll measure it to length and cut it to final dimension. Here we go. There we go, we've got our final seat top length. Now all we have to do is attach it to the base and take a seat. So after I finished gluing up both sides of the stool, I went ahead and glued in the straight stretchers. Now these were very easy to glue in. It's just the same Kocher tenon and glue, Kocher mortise and glue, clamp it up. I let it cure overnight. Now we've got our moment of truth. Although to be fair, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is gonna work. One other thing I did when I was gluing it up was I made sure I put it on a nice level surface, the workbench, so that way it's nice and straight and solid. It's pretty good. I'm just going to pop it on the floor here, put my seat top on, give it a, give it a quick sit. So now all that's left to do is attach the seat. And to do that, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to roughly position my seat. I want to make sure we've got a relatively even overhang, even for a shop stool, and countersink a couple holes and put some screws in. So there we have it, our mortise and tenon shop stool made with router mortises and tenons on the table saw. Now this is going to be kicking around the shop, so it's going to get a little beat up, a little dinged up. Um, I probably will go through and sand it a little bit, break the edges, throw some finish on it. But again, it's a shop stool, it's a little bit crude, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it did get some dings. That's it for this episode, stay tuned for more I Can Do That, I'm going to take a seat. <laughs>